Hey guys and gals, it is the Cannabis Crone. I hope you're all having a great afternoon. I wanted to do this podcast. Uh, it's going to be limited politically. We're not going to get into the political stuff, although I always say that and then I get political. So we, we don't know. Everything's political these days. So we'll see. But what this podcast is about is some serious cannabis protocol in light of this current pandemic. So this is uh, to all the people that are utilizing cannabis right now or were utilizing it and maybe afraid to utilize it during the uh, pandemic. And so we'll get to all of that. Um, but it is time for some serious cannab- cannabis protocol. We are seeing the end of days for Puff Puff Pass Pass. You know, that kind of cannabis utilization where you could stand in a crowd full of, you know, hundreds of people watching a concert and passing joints and bowls back and forth down the line. You know, those days of uh, just grabbing a joint, coming from a stranger and smoking it are over. Um, and in fact, probably a lot of the, the concert entertainment arena type entertainment is probably run its course as well. You know, um, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm just saying what I believe. And what I believe is that we are going to have to find a brand new way of um, dealing with being out in public and dealing with all of this other stuff. And uh, cannabis use is no no exception. You know, again, the puff, puff, pass, pass, fun days, great days, standing around a bonfire. Um, doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do that again. So cannabis intake during the pandemic. If you can use more, you should use more. And here's why. Cannabis provides much needed cannabinoids for your endocannabinoid system. Uh, which is the most important system in the human physiology. The endocannabinoid system regulates all of the other bodily systems, uh, such as your digestive system, your circulatory system, uh, respiratory system, reproductive system, excretory, endocrine. You have muscular, nervous, lymphatic, all of those symptoms. Um, Literally every symptom that you rely on as a human being to survive, the endocannabinoid system regulates. So all of these systems benefit from a healthy endocannabinoid system. What is the best way to get the cannabinoids that are suited for our endocannabinoid system? Not just that they're cannabinoids, but that they are uh, physiologically linked to our endocannabinoid system. That's pretty powerful information. That shows us that as humans, we're supposed to be utilizing this plant. Uh, for medic, for medication, for nutrition. So uh, keep that in mind. So why is cannabis still illegal in many states if it's so great? Here's the little political part. Because uh, that's a podcast for another day. I could fill up five or six hours worth of why, you know, cannabis is illegal. Um, suffice, it, suffice it to say, capitalism has been the nemesis of the legalization of cannabis, uh, mainly coming from a big farm perspective. But you also have, uh, you know, any chemical, any company, chemical company that makes plastics, they don't want to see hemp legalized, uh, you know, nationwide because uh, hemp is much stronger than anything that they can create in a lab. You know, it, it's it's so versatile. Um, basically, the Rockefeller Carnegie feuds, uh, the um, industrial versus agricultural fighting, infighting that was going on back in those days, had a lot to do with it. Entities like Dupont, various millionaire lumber barons, they all did their part in making marijuana and hemp illegal. And in fact. The benefits of this sacred plant were buried under miles of propaganda, coupled with huge negative public relations campaigns. Um, For example, Reefer Madness, the movie, if you remember that movie, that was just a a very, very um, directed campaign of uh, misinformation and negativity directed at this plant. Uh, so, cannabis can be used in various ways. Uh, we all know about smoking it. But if you do contract one of the sicknesses uh, floating around out there, smoking may not be conducive for lung health during a flu bug or the C virus. By the way, YouTube is removing any and all content uh, that mentions anything about this virus by name that isn't sanctioned by the CDC, which, of course, uh, cannabis is not sanctioned by the CDC. 
Which in itself is a joke because the CDC uh, was gutted as soon as Cheeto Amigo took power. And so we know all of most of the experts, the real, you know, intelligent ones, they no longer work for the CDC. So, you know, take what they say with a grain of salt. Uh, but anyway, I'm using the general term virus or the C word or the C virus uh, to refer to the specific virus that is the starring role in this pandemic. That way they won't take my video down. So... Other ways of ingesting cannabis besides smoking that can help if you do have some lung problems or some respiratory problems with, with your sickness. Making cannabis butter is a wonderful way of having medicine at your fingertips. Uh, and powerful medicinal grade cannabis butter does not need your good buds. In fact, if you are a grower, save all your clippings, buy yourself some uh, good, you know, quality butter in the supermarket. Do not use margarine. I'm telling you right now, don't use margarine. If anyone out there is using margarine, even just for eating or cooking, don't do it. Oh, my God. Ah, it's gross. Don't use it. It's, it's nothing. But you know what margarine is good for? Margarine is good for if you have, like, green wood that you have to burn in the wintertime. You just take it. You take a stick of margarine and rub it on the log, and it works as, um, as a fire starter. That's it. That's the only thing it's good for. I wouldn't even put, I don't, I would not even put margarine in my compost because that's how icky I think it is. Anyway, don't just use good butter. Okay. If you're going to make medicine, use the ingredients that are good for you. And butter is way better for you than margarine. So anyway, use your uh, supermarket grade butter, get a crock pot and you can make yourself uh, medicinal butter very easily. It's not difficult at all. And in fact, if you want to uh, message me in the comments, I can give you my recipe for making a uh, really good butter out of stems and leaves and clippings and, you know, uh, and you can save the buds for smoking. So, and I'm telling you, but the, the butter that I make is, uh, it's kind of renowned among my smaller circle. People really do enjoy it. They, it works really well. And um, it's, it's just another good delivery for that medicine. With butter, you can substitute it for regular butter in all of your favorite recipes. So basically, you can medicate with cookies, brownie scones, popcorn. You can make savory dishes. Like uh, I made a baked salmon with, with garlic honey glaze, uh, which had the cannabis butter in it. Very good. Meatloaf lasagna, anything, pizza. You can make pizza with cannabis butter. Um, the sky's literally the limit when it comes to edibles. Now, I do have a caveat, though, that I want to make sure I get out there, and that is this. Only use clippings from growers that you know and trust to only use organic fertilizers and that you know they'll do a good job of flushing the plants before harvesting. That's really important. There are a lot of people out there that want to grow quickly, and they want to grow quantity, and that's where those miracle Grow products come in, which are just toxic poisons that you should not use. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're growing, same thing. You shouldn't. You should not. You should be using everything organic because this is medicine that you're going to be putting into your body. You don't want. You don't want that toxicity in there either. And some of this stuff is really bad. I mean, you know. Okay. So put it this way. If you see a guy in a hazmat suit spraying something on vegetables and then the company says, oh, this is so safe, you can totally eat it. Are you going to believe that? Because the guy's wearing a hazmat suit. Why? Why would he be wearing a hazmat suit? I mean, if he could be rolling around in it and it's, you know, no worse than sugar water. Yeah. It's, uh, it's crap. So anyway, stay away from the chemicals. Grow organically. There's so many ways to make your plants really healthy and natural newts. I mean, bat guano. Um, there's just so many things out there. Seaweed is really good. Um, dried fish guts. I mean, there's all sorts of things that can, that can really help your plants to grow healthy that you don't need all those chemicals, you know. So stay away from that whole Monsanto micro or uh, miracle grow section. Uh, in Home Depot or Menards because you don't need to use it. Okay, so that was the caveat. Make sure that you're using organically grown products. Um, tinctures, both alcohol and glycerin, are wonderful ways of medicating. And because you're using them with either measure, measured syringes or the droppers, 
um, they can be the easiest way to begin microdosing. So if anyone's out there and you want to utilize, but you're kind of scared because you don't want that, you know, oh, oh my God, I'm so fucked up. Am I going to forget to breathe feeling? Um, and that's no fun for anybody. I mean, yeah. And if you want to start microdosing so that, so that you can build up the levels in your body for health, but you're not necessarily going to get high, um, tinctures, both alcohol-based and the glycerin-based, are really good for that because you can be very direct. Like you can take your seven drops in the morning, seven drops in the afternoon, seven drops at night, and you're getting exactly what you want for dosing. So um, they're real conducive to that. Um, you know, for people who have to dose before and during work, like myself, uh, just uh, a personal story. I have lupus. I have bipolar disorder with OCD and uh, anxiety with PTSD. And it can get hairy. I use multiple times a day. And um, yet I don't generally look like your stereotypical stoner dude um, because I have levels built up in my system. Uh, so I can look perfectly normal and articulate and get my point across in the daytime. Um, and then I can wait until evening to enjoy getting wide open baked, which I do like doing too. You know, that's my Merlot. I've said that before. My Cabernet Sauvignon is either Malawi or sour diesel, you know? So, um, okay. So we've got tinctures. And we've got edibles. We also have um, what I, I make a can of bomb, which is just simply coconut oil, uh, virgin coconut oil, and cannabis clippings. And I make this uh, can of bomb. It's another effective way to dose. Uh, number one, if you have skin problems. Now, one of the symptoms from having lupus is a butterfly rash. And I had a horrible rash all over my face. You can probably still tell um, I have a little bit of scarring on my cheek uh, that just turns up as perpetual redness. But And my uh, chest, uh, there's this part that's clear, and then the rest of this, it just looks like a permanent rash. You can't really see it so much on the computer. Uh, my face used to look like someone took sandpaper and rubbed it as hard as they could on my face. That's how red it was. It was horrible. And so, of course, you know, I, I'm working at the radio station and I have to go out and do live remotes and stuff like that. So I have to try and look like I don't have some kind of fucking leprosy. So I had to use a lot of heavy face makeup. I'm not using any skin makeup now. I'm so happy that my skin is like, you know, healthier. I'm using eye makeup. That's it. My face can breathe free now. And if anyone's ever had to wear a quantity of pancake makeup, you know how itchy and and heavy and cra and then you feel like you have to keep going to the mirror and checking because you just scratched and you know did you mess it up? And so, I'm so happy with that. That that was cannabis bomb doing that. My um, skin has bounced back in a huge way, and I'm convinced that uh, part of it is that when I went, started to go through menopause. I stopped using any of those major, uh, you know, oil of Olay or um, what are I can't, you know, I don't even remember what the Maybelline, whatever the skincare product places are. I know oil of Olay is one big one. Neutrogena, um, they all have these these chemical laden components with Restylane and 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 fillers and I mean really some really awful stuff. And you're putting it on your skin, okay? Your skin is absorbing all of that stuff and it's all ending up back in your body, right? Oh, hold on a minute. Jib is my kitty's laying by my, I didn't want him to lay right next to the outlets. I get nervous. I think of a Christmas vacation where the cat got electrocuted by the tree, by the Christmas tree. And I'm real paranoid about my animals being near sockets and stuff. Sorry, Jibs, didn't mean to move you. So anyway. Um, but, uh, I'm, I won't use skincare nowadays unless I can eat it. You know, if I, if I can take the product and ingest it without getting sick, then it can go on my face. Otherwise it's not going on my body in any way, shape or form. Uh, that's my litmus test to skincare products. And I make my own now. Um, my menopause lupus skin regeneration pro program is basically real easy. I wash my face every night with warm water and a washcloth. Uh, then I use a cannabis alcohol astringent, 
all over my face with a cotton ball, you know, and it kind of opens the pores and it feels tingly. And then after that, I use the Cannabalm uh, with liquid vitamin E. And that's what I moisturize with. That's the only thing I use on my skin anymore. But Cannabalm, like I said, the Cannabalm that you make simply with the clippings and with some virgin coconut oil is so great for a muscle and bone rub. If you have pain from, um, you know, things like sports injuries or even MS. I have two clients. One uh, uses it for arthritis in the hands and the joints. I have another uh, female a client who uses it for her MS and she swears by it. It's She says it's, it works better than most of the medicines that she takes on the tongue. And that's another thing to keep in mind is that Everyone's physiology is different, so there are going to be different modes of cannabis. There will be different types. There's, you know, you have your indica, you have your sativas, you have so many different types out there that it would really behoove you to find an expert to help you decide uh, which form of cannabis is going to be best for you to take and which kind is going to work the best with your particular affliction. Uh, real important. So this woman is getting some really major um, positive effects from using the balm. So that's that's another thing. Um, I've also gotten in the habit, and this is just me. This this is just a weird thing that that I that I came up with. But uh, when I have to go out in public, I take a little bit of that cannabis balm and I put it on the insides of my nose. You know, just kind of like like you would take Vaseline and put like a little layer of Vaseline in the winter time if it's real cold, because when you're breathing in that cold, it can crack your skin. At least living in northern Minnesota, we live with this fucking kind of cold all the time. In fact, it was snowing yesterday here. Yeah, there were flurries. It sucks sometimes. But anyway, um, once summer gets in full swing, it's like, okay, this is cool. But no, right now, I don't. Cold weather in May sucks, let's face it. So anyway, um, I take it and use it like a Vaseline on the inside of my nostrils because the C virus that's going around, um, you know, a lot of times like the flu virus will live in your mouth and your throat before going systemic. And apparently this one uh, hangs out in your nose. So it's just kind of a nice little barrier to put between your skin and something and anything else while you're wearing the mask. So, um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I'm not saying this is going to prevent anything. I'm just saying that's something that I do. But I'm a huge believer that if you can keep cannabis or the cannabinoid levels in your system up, then you're going to um, be giving yourself a little added protection. Hold on a minute. Evelyn, stop. Come here. Come here. Evie, come here. Get over here. Oh, this is the little loud baby. That's Evie. Can you say, can you say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hmm? Now she has nothing to say. Okay, but anyway. Evie is uh, <laughs> our resident in dark. <laughs> All right, I'm just shush. Hey, <laughs> she'll keep doing that. And when I talk about her, she gets pissed. So I got to stop talking about her. All right. So anyway, <laughs> I've stopped. Um, <laughs> I totally don't know where I was. Oh, yeah. It's just an added precaution. But I, I really think that keeping that those levels up, if you keep your cannab or your endocannabinoid system happy and healthy, it will help your immune system to fight off these things in a much more comprehensive way. So that's just my two cents. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I don't even play one on TV. So... Uh, let's see. Reefer etiquette. Um, no more puff, puff, pass, pass. That is, that's behind us and it sucks. You know, we're never going to have that wonderful, you know, you get to be around friends and you get to smoke and that kind of sucks. But the next time you feel comfortable enough to have friends over. Here are a couple of tips. You know, if, if you're smokers and you have smokers that are friends, you want to share your pot, but you don't want to share a bowl. 
Go to your local head shop uh, or anywhere that you can buy pipes, and you can get glass pipe one hitters. Okay. The reason I say glass is because you should never be smoking out of metal. I don't care if you swear by your vape pen. I bought a very expensive vape pen last year,、um, and it was supposed to be good quality. And I ended up getting heavy metal poisoning. And I'll tell you something: that is like the worst feeling thing in the world. If you've ever had heavy metal poisoning, you know I was I was literally like for four days on death's door. I felt like I was dying. And it turned out the、uh, a lot of these metal pipes are used with cadmium solder, which is poisonous. It's toxic. You're basically breathing in toxic fumes. And I believe that that might have been what was going on with people's lungs when they were vaping. I think it had to do with the heavy metal poisoning, you know, instead of、uh, instead of. The like the flavors and stuff like that. I think that had something to do with it. I know it did with me, and I will never ever smoke out of metal. I will only smoke out of glass. So, go to your local shop and pick up a couple. I think like at our shop, you can get two for thirteen dollars, two glass pipes. Get a couple of glass pipes, and then when people come over, you know, and you're doing your social distancing thing, and you're just kind of hanging out,、uh, you can put the pipes on the table、uh, next to a bowl of cannabis and say, hey. You guys help yourselves, and that way everybody can smoke. But they all have their own personal one. You can even let them take them home as party favors, whatever. But that is the kind of etiquette that we're going to have to start developing.、Um, you know, for getting together and smoking pot with each other because it, it we we need to be safe. You know, I mean, I believe that cannabis is the probably the safest、uh, thing to use to unwind, obviously. But、uh, in order to do so, we need to start being a little safer, and that's just you know things change all the time. We are not in a stagnant society, and so this too has to change. But it doesn't have to be worse. You know, we can have fun with it. We can be creative.、Uh, one thing I do want to tell you to do is wash your water pipes every single night. Every night, regardless, dump it out, let it dry overnight. Very, very important.、Um, and this is something else that I came up with myself. I mean, nobody has said this. There's no like guidelines anywhere out there, but. I know that Legionnaires' disease. There was a huge outbreak in Maryland. It must have been in the 80s sometime, and it turned out that it was the air conditioning units because of the stagnant water were literally passing Le- Legionnaires' disease through the hallways and stuff, and people were getting sick. So,、um, viruses can live in water. Okay, you got to clean it out every night. And if you've ever like. You know, I mean, back in the day, like a lot of times, people would, you know, dare somebody to drink bong water. Oh God, it makes me sick thinking about it. It gets bong water is the gnarliest thing. If you've ever spilled your bong,、uh, you know, after using it for like a month, I mean, it's just it's crazy. It's a crazy. The it's it's just sick. I don't like.、It. I hate bong water, so I've always been a changer. Anyway, I've always changed out my water, but now I think that it's really important because viruses can live and breed in water. You know, they get a nice wet area, and they go to town with it. So,、um, first thing, every single night, wash, dump, and dry. Uh, the next thing, my partner and I don't even share a share a bong or a, or a pipe. Anymore, he has his pipes. I have my pipes. We always, you know, when we get new pipes, we always get two at a time, you know.、Um, and we don't share bongs. We both went out and got our own. This is mine. Nobody else smokes out of this except for me. And he has his own. And I think that's just going to be a real important thing for the future, especially with water bongs. Think about how many people. I mean, I remember、uh, hanging out with my brother in St. Mary's College, and、uh, he made this huge bong that you had to stand up in order to take a hit, and somebody else had to pull the carb out, and it was like, <laughs> oh my god, you had a bunch of dirty hippies like sucking out of that same bong with the same water, and it's like, 
ah, you know, it's I'm surprised that we didn't have a pandemic sooner. But anyway, nowadays, let's not take the chance. So um, again, his and her, his and her bongs, you know, his and her pipes. Um, no more puff, puff, pass, pass. And uh, I it, it for me for not not like smoking out of my part, because obviously we're together all the time, you know, we're, we're in quarantine together. So obviously, you know, if, if one of us gets sick, the other probably will, but I'm the one who's doing the running and going to town. So I don't want to transmit something, um, you know, especially not smoking the ganj because that would be heartbreaking. You know, I wouldn't want to make someone sick when I'm doing something that, that I believe in that I love and that medicates me. You know, with some extra precautions in place, um, you'll be able to safely utilize one of the most important plants on this planet for human health. And yes, I am making that claim. And history will bear me out eventually when everything collapses and we actually have a better form of governing and uh, and healthcare and all that stuff. You know, when when our healthcare system becomes led by healing instead of profiteering, that's when we're going to see cannabis really come into its own. And there's going to be some amazing things that that come out of that. If you visit um, Hebrew University, the Hebrew University website in Jerusalem, if you visit that website, they have a cannabinoid task force that they've had for over 50 some years. And they've, they've discovered some really amazing things. Bone density, uh, cannabis, components of the cannabis plant can help improve bone density, especially in the elderly uh, experiencing osteoporosis. How cool is that? We should have cannabis nursing homes all over the place. Evie! Oh, my God. Little dogs. But we should. We should have nursing homes that are serving cannabis on trays for the patients to utilize in any way, shape, or form they want to. I want to see 90-year-old grannies uh, taking a bong hit. Because you can bet when I'm 90, if I live to be 90, it's going to be because of this. And I'm still going to be using it. So anyway, that's my podcast. I don't really have much more. I just wanted to touch base with you guys about safe cannabis utilization during the pandemic. And after the pandemic. Good habits to get into, okay? Um, As always, you can like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. And um, any questions or anything, you know, hit me up. You know, you can write it in the comments. I will get back to you if you have any questions or if I I don't know the answer, um, I'll either try to find it for you or maybe turn you on to somebody who might know. Uh, You know, I have a pretty good working knowledge, but every day I'm learning more. <laughs> isn't that isn't that awesome? Isn't that the awesome thing about life is that we just we can keep learning and that's really cool. So anyway, I hope you all stay happy and healthy. And if you can't be healthy, I hope you're strong until you can get healthy again. Be good to one another because we are 